Now let us discuss the 16th question. With reference to Pradhan Mantri Annadata Aya Sanrakshana Abhiyan, PM Asha, consider the following statements. What is Annadata? Annadata is your farmer, the one who is providing with you with Ann. Ann is your grain. I is your income. Sanrakshan meaning protection. Therefore, income support scheme for the farmers or farmer support scheme. Okay? Now the first statement. First statement is what? The scheme aims at ensuring remunerative prices to the farmers for their produce. Now this statement is obviously correct, which is obvious from the uh, scheme, name of the scheme itself. Annadata Aya Sanrakshan. So it aims at ensuring remunerative prices to the farmers for the produce. The second statement, integrated management of PDS. PDS is your public distribution system, right? Public distribution system through which the food crops are basically distributed at the fair price shops, etc. Okay, is a sub component under the scheme. Now, this is a factual statement. So, let us skip this question for uh, this statement for now. Let us come to the third statement under the sub component price support scheme PSS physical procurement of pulses only. Now, see, only is an extreme word right it is an extreme word and in general the government will not announce a scheme the government will not announce a scheme that will be restricted to a single crop only because the farmers in india or across the world grow various types of crops and they do not focus only on a single crop therefore if a scheme has to be announced it will focus more on more pulses that should be obvious it has to be done by the central nodal agencies while the procurement expenditure and losses due to procurement shall be shared between the center and the states okay now the question is asking which of these three statements are wrong now we have figured out that the first statement is correct right so we can eliminate all those options which have first a option can be eliminated and B option can be eliminated. Why? Because the question is asking for wrong statements. What are we left with? 2 and 3 and 3. Now 2, we are not sure of whether this is wrong or right. Hence, we are left with a 50-50 chance. Okay? Now it is better to be aware of such things. Okay? Now let us go to the explanation. The answer is stated as C. That is 2 and 3 both are wrong. Now we had predicted 3 to be wrong. So, uh, now let us go into the explanation. Now, why is this question in news? Okay, what is the, what is the news? The center has asked or uh, the center has recently launched PM Asha in keeping with its commitment and dedication for the Annadata. That is the farmer. The statement one is correct, right? PM Asha is aimed at ensuring remunerative prices to farmers for their produce and it will provide MSP assurance as announced in the union budget of 2018 and 19. Now, PM Asha PM has three components to it. The first is your price support scheme. Okay, price support scheme, which is shortened or abbreviated as PSS. Now, what will uh, what what does this component stand for? Under this, physical procurement will be done. You know, physical procurement ki jayegi by whom? by the central nodal agencies, the central nodal agencies along with your state governments will physically procure, okay, along with your state government will physically procure, they will procure what? They will procure pulses, they will procure oil seeds and they will procure copra. These three food crops will be procured physically by the central nodal agencies along with your state government. And moreover, the central government under PSS, the central government will bear loss, will bear procurement expenditure, procurement expenditure plus losses due to procurement, losses due to procurement up to 25%. Okay, up to 25% of production. So this was your price support scheme. Now the second leg of your uh, PM Asha is the PDPS which stands for price deficiency payment scheme in this what will happen is this will cover all oil seeds okay and uh, it will pay the central government will pay 
into the bank account of the farmer directly it will pay what it will pay the difference between the msp and the price at which the farmer has sold his crop at the mandi why why will the farmer resort to selling his crop at the mandi because the procurement system of the government is limited not all oil seeds can be procured by the government by the fci why because we have limited storage transportation etc uh, we have limitations with in these regard hence uh, moreover not all farmers have access to these uh, centers to sell their crops at msp hence they have to resort to selling at the agricultural mandis however in general it is found that the prices in these agricultural mandis are lower than the msp which is your minimum support price what is minimum support price this is the price at which the government will procure the food crops okay in case the price of the food crop grows lower than msp then the government will uh, procure the food crop at this minimum support price this is basically uh done to assure the farmers of a certain pay for the food crop that they have produced okay now the third leg the third leg is the pilot of private procurement okay private procurement and stockless scheme private procurement and stockless scheme which is your pp ss now what is this in this what happens is see as the name of this sub component suggests private procurement what is done in this case is that in case of oil seeds theek hai na the states will have the options of rolling out private procurement and stockless schemes what will happen is a private player theek hai a private player can procure the crops at msp when the market prices have fallen below the msp then what will happen is the central government will compensate this private player through a service charge theek hai na he will be compensated through a service charge that will be up to a maximum of 15% of the msp of that particular crop is this clear so your pm asha has three sub components to again revise you have the price support scheme under which physical procurement will be done for uh, pulses copra and oil seeds then you have the price deficiency payment scheme under which uh, for oil seeds it will cover all the oil seeds and the difference of the msp and the price at which the farmer has paid his crop uh, sold his crop at the mandi will be transferred directly into the bank account and the third is it is the pilot of a private procurement and stockless scheme in this case what will happen is a private player will enter the market and buy the food crops at msp okay he'll purchase food crops at msp and then uh, this private player will be compensated by the government to at service charge okay na through a service charge that will be up to a maximum of 15% of the msp of that particular crop i hope this is clear now moving on uh, see now what was the need what was the need for this okay na why was the need now recently in the last budget the government had announced that uh, it had announced that it will pay farmers the cost of production theek hai cost of production plus 50% profit while procuring the farm produce it had announced 1.5 times the msp for all the food crops but what would what happened is the since as we have discussed before not all the food crops can be procured in the open procurement scheme of the central government due to limitations theek okay? hai there are certain limitations so what happens is in case of uh, produce a surplus in the produce there is a huge fall in the prices of these food crops and since both the reach of the farmers reach of the farmers is limited plus the procurement capacity of the government is limited again both both these aspects lead to what it leads to distress selling theek hai distress selling ho jati hai because of this hence msp merely raising msp to 1.5 times is not sufficient 
टू कॉम्पनसेट द फार्मर्स तो इसलिए आपका दिस पी एम आशा स्कीम वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड नॉ लेट इज मूव फॉरवर्ड विथ रेफरेंस टू ग्लोबल हंगर इंडेक्स ग्लोबल हंगर इंडेक्स टू थाउजेंड एटीन कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट द इंडेक्स वॉज प्रिपेयर बाय वॉशिंगटन बेस्ड इंटरनेशनल फूड पॉलिसी रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट इफ प्री ठीक है Now this is what had happened last year, ठीक है? 2017 वाला. Second statement. तो यहाँ पे first statement is wrong. First statement wrong मतलब क्या हो गया? See which of the first above statements are wrong? पूछा है. तो even if you have first wrong, you're still stuck with three options. तो we have eliminated A, but we are left with three options still. Second statement. The index measures four indicators. ठीक है? Under nourishment, true. Under five nutrition, under five mortality rate, child wasting, child stunting, under three dimensions, uh, inadequate food supply, child mortality, and child undernutrition. India has improved its rank from the previous year by three places and is ranked at 103 out of 119 countries. Yet hunger levels in the country are categorized as serious. Now let us go to the explanation. The answer is given as B. Which means the question was asking for which of the statements are wrong. Hence, one and three both are wrong. The second statement is correct. Now let us go to the explanation. First of all, the statement one is wrong. Why? Who releases? Who has prepared the global hung hunger index for 2018? It has been produced by global NGOs, namely Concern Wild Life and Wealth Hunger Health. This is a German NGO. ठीक है? तो these two NGOs have produced or they have prepared this global hunger index for 2018 theek hai now ghi was calculated each year by ifpri since 2006 but it has stepped aside so till 2017 the ghi 2017 this was prepared by ifpri now this has been asked in a previous year upsc as well that who prepares your global hunger index however this has changed this year and you have two global ngos which have produced uh, sorry which have prepared your global hunger index this year you have the concern wildlife and you have the wealth hunger health this is a german uh, ngo now statement 2 the statement 2 is correct You have four indicators to reflect the multi-dimensional nature of hunger. The Global Hunger Index uh, combines the following four component indicators into one index. You have four components. Now remember this. This is very important. Undernourishment. What is undernourishment? Undernourished as a percentage of the population. ठीक है? The share of population whose caloric intake is insufficient. So the caloric intake, undernourishment is measured. How it is mentioned by caloric intake? Is this clear? The second is your child waste. Sorry, the child wasting. Children under the age of five. Remember this: under the age of five, suffering from wasting. What is wasting? Wasting is low low weight for their height, reflecting acute undernutrition. Acute meaning severe. ठीक है? Acute का मतलब हो गया severe. Child stunting. Now stunting, we know it is basically low height for their age, under five mortality rate. Mortality rate of children under the age of five, a fatal mix of inadequate nutrition and unhealthy environment. ठीक है? Now these are measured under three dimensions: inadequate food supply, which is under nutrition. You have child mortality, which is your under five mortality rate, and you have the child under nutrition, which combines or which has child wasting and child stunting. So there are three dimensions to the global hunger index. Okay, what are these three dimensions? You have inadequate, inadequate food supply, under which you have your undernourishment. Okay, this is your indicator. Then you have uh, the child mortality. चाइल्ड मोर्टैलिटी के लिए क्या इंडिकेटर यूज की गई है अंडर फाइव मोर्टैलिटी रेट एंड देन यू हैव द थर्ड डायमेंशन व्हिच इज योर अंडर न्यूट्रिशन अंडर न्यूट्रिशन अंडर न्यूट्रिशन के अंदर कौन कौन से इंडिकेटर्स हैं यू हैव बेसिकली चाइल्ड वेस्टिंग एंड यू हैव चाइल्ड स्टंटिंग ठीक है द व्हाट इज वेस्टिंग वेस्टिंग इज बेसिकली लो हाइट फॉर सॉरी लो वेट फॉर हाइट 
now you must remember these you are, there are chances of getting confused stunting is obvious stunting is low height for age low height for age theek hai but uh, wasting is basically low height low weight for height theek hai now statement 3 is wrong yeah, what is the statement 3 saying here india has improved its rank however this is a wrong statement india ranks 103 out of 119 countries with hunger levels in the country categorized as serious india's rank has slipped three places now see in general upsc will never ask about what is the current rank india will uh, sorry upsc will not directly ask a question on rank however it will ask the trend that has been in ranking that is whether the rank of india has fallen in a particular index or it has increased theek hai na so this trend will be asked by upsc not the exact exact rank now let us move on to the next question rbi has put some trigger points to assess monitor control and take corrective actions on banks under which uh, under which sorry on banks which are weak and troubled under the prompt corrective action framework which of the following is not one of them theek hai capital to risk weighted asset ratio net non performing assets return on assets and capital adequacy ratio now clearly the answer is uh, d the question is asking which is not a indicator of uh, under which a bank can be put under the prompt corrective action framework now let us discuss what is this theek hai rbi has issued a policy action guideline in the form of prompt corrective action framework if a commercial bank's financial condition versus below a mark theek hai what does pca framework specify it basically specifies the trigger points theek hai na trigger points or the level below which the rbi will intervene with corrective action now there are three uh, trigger points first is your crar which is capital to risk weighted asset ratio second is your net npas non performing assets and third is your return on assets roa you may, you have to just remember these trigger points not, you need not go into the details of this upsc will never ask a question into uh, details of uh, these theek hai and uh, some of the structured and discretionary actions that could be taken by rbi are it can recapitalize yani ki it can infuse capital into that particular commercial bank to save it from uh, failure second is restrictions on borrowing from interbank market because the bank is basically losing its ability to pay back loans the third is merge or amalgamation or liquidate the bank and for this impose moratorium on the bank if its crar does not improve the corrective actions are tough with worsening of financials is this clear this is your prompt corrective action framework this has again been in news and uh, this was also a tussle this was also a cause of tussle between the government and the rbi after the february 12 circular of the rbi now i would request you to go and refer to what is the february 12 circular of the rbi theek hai now let us move forward moving forward to the 19th question exercise io wave uh 18 conducted recently is related to internet of things maritime security tsunami preparedness d conservation of ocean environment now this is a factual question uh, this you should have come across in your preparation the answer is c india along with 23 other nations will be participating in a major indian ocean wide tsunami mock exercise known as io wave 18 theek hai it's a tsunami ocean wide tsunami mock exercise tsunami preparedness mock exercise it will involve the evacuation of thousands of people from coastal areas in over half a dozen states now who is conducting this exercise it is being conducted by intergovernmental oceanographic commission of unesco remember these facts theek hai it is being conducted by intergovernmental oceanographic commission of unesco what is the purpose of this exercise the purpose of this exercise is to increase tsunami preparedness meaning to be prepared to face the eventuality of a tsunami what how you will uh, respond to a tsunami moreover evaluate the response capabilities in each state and improve coordination throughout the region theek hai moving on 
uh, the 20th question which of the following is not true regarding global economic prospects report now the global economic prospect report is released by world bank you must be aware or oh, sorry you must be prepared and you must be thorough with the reports that are released by prominent institutions such as the world bank the imf okay you have uh, the world economic forum the reports of world economic forum are also uh, important to be remembered for upsc these three and you have other institutions also but uh, these three prominent institutions in case are reports and indices you must be aware of okay because a question can figure in your prelims so let us come back to the question which of the following is not true the first uh, the first thing we know about the global economic prospect report is that it is prepared by the world bank okay na so let us look at the statements that have been provided it is a report issued by unctad now this is a wrong statement we have just discussed it is released by world bank second it examines the, therefore first is wrong the question is asking not true therefore the option must contain a two since b and c do not contain therefore we can strike out b and c options we are left with a and a d it examines global economic developments and prospects with a special focus on emerging markets and developing economies it is issued once in a year in june now we know that it is issued twice in a year it is a biennial report theek hai na the world bank group releases it twice in a year hence the third statement is also wrong so one along with three should be in an answer now we are we were left with a and d now since d contains three hence we can mark d as the correct answer theek hai na now coming to the explanation statement one is wrong global economic prospects is a report is a world bank a uh, flagship report that examines global economic developments and prospects statement 2 is correct it's a factual the uh, factual meaning it's a description of the report statement 3 is wrong it is issued twice in a year once it comes out in january second it comes out in june what does this report do it examines global economic developments and prospects the january edition includes in depth analysis of topical policy challenges while the june edition contains shorter analytical pieces 